They're talking about slow down and stop. We will not stop. All of the forces of Eastland, Barnett, Wallace, and Thurman will not stop this revolution. If we do not get meaningful legislation out of this Congress, the time will come when we will not confine our march into Washington. We will march through the South, through the streets of Jackson, through the streets of Danville, through the streets of Cambridge, through the streets of Birmingham. But we will march with the spirit of love and with the spirit of dignity that we have shown here today. By the forces of our demands, our determination, and our numbers, we shall send a desegregated South into a thousand pieces and put them together in the image of God and democracy. We must say, wake up America, wake up, for we cannot stop and we will not and cannot be patient. But we are entering, we are entering a new era in which we must, as Americans, demand stature and size in our national leadership. Leadership, leadership which is fresh, leadership which is open, and leadership which is receptive to the problems of all Americans. I have faith in the American people. I believe that we are smart enough to correct our mistakes. I believe that we are intelligent enough to recognize the talent, energy, and dedication that all Americans, including women and minorities, have to offer. Jobs justice, peace. This is a theme that we've been hearing today over and over again. This is a theme that came out in 1963 when A. Philip Randolph, a trade unionist, came forth to call for a march on Washington, asking for an end to Jim Crow laws, equal access to public education, and civil rights legislation that would change the face of a nation. Today we come before you, walking on the road to jobs, the road to peace, the road to justice, paved with the blood, the sweat, the tears of labor movement people from around the nation. And today I come to you as a young girl, as a young black girl, to ask you to use us. Use the young people of the United States of America to pave the road that will last forever. Pave the road that lasts from the foot. Soldiers, let us not have to do this again for our children. He asks you to come forth with you, not behind you, not in front of you, but together on that road to jobs, justice, and peace. And so our slogan must not be burn, baby, burn. It must be build, baby, build. Organize, baby, organize. Our slogan must be learn, baby, learn, so that we can earn, baby, earn. And with the powerful commitment, I believe that we can transform dark yesterdays of injustice into bright tomorrows of justice and humanity. Let us keep going toward the goal of selfhood, toward the realization of the brotherhood, and toward the realization of dream and understanding and goodwill. Let nobody stop us. I will see those signs that said white men, colored men, White women, colored women, white waiting, colored waiting. I will come home and ask my mother, my father, my grandparents, my great grandparents, why? And they was, that's the way it is. Don't get in the way, don't get in trouble. But one day in 1955, 15 years old in the 10th grade, I heard of Rosa Parks. I heard the words of Martin Luther King Jr. on the old radio during the Montgomery bus boycott. And the words of Martin Luther King Jr. and the action of Rosa Parks inspired me to find a way to get in the way. I got in the way. I got in trouble, what I call good trouble, necessary trouble. I said to you as graduates, you must go out and get in trouble, necessary trouble to help make our country and make our world a better place. You must go out and get in trouble, necessary trouble, 
to help make our country and help make our world a better place. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have a moral obligation, a mission and a mandate to stand up, to speak up, and to speak out. No justice, no peace. 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 No justice, no peace.